On this day in 1970, Celtic recorded their biggest ever win in European competition. The European Cup first round, first leg match against Finnish champions Kokola on the 16th of September 1970 was Celtic's first in the competition since losing to Feyenoord in the final on the 6th of May and they had been a club in turmoil ever since with an ill-fated summer tour of North America seeing Tommy Gemmell and Bertie Auld sent home in disgrace and Jock Steen leaving for home literally in the middle of a game amid rumours that he was about to take over at Manchester United. In the event, the manager turned down United, an uneasy peace was made with Gemmell and Auld and the club tried to pull itself together again after the trauma of Milan. There were many great occasions still to come for Steen Celtic but Milan definitely marked a watershed in his reign and things were never quite the same again. Not much was known about Coquilla, who played in green and white with a large letter K on their jerseys, but Jock Steen was promising a high-scoring performance on the day of the match. Malcolm Munro wrote in the Evening Times on the 16th of September. Says Jock Steen, I'll have youngsters like Paul Wilson standing by and, depending on how things are going, I'll play him. I said to Jock, that's quite a bet. The bookies are laying 8-1 to one against Celtic, scoring three goals in each half. And do you know what the man said? No, it's not. Supposing we score more? Obviously, this is the way Steen and his men are anticipating this game. They are chock full of confidence and you can take it the Finns are going to take it in the neck. Just to be sure we win, gagged Steen. You tip us to lose like you did against Rangers. Funny, huh? Coquilla will play in green and white, so what will the Celtic colours be? The greatest outfit you've ever seen, says Jock. A real winner. But you'll have to wait and see what it is. Celtic lined up in a new all-yellow away strip. Williams, McGrain, Brogan, Murdoch, McNeil, Hay, Johnston, Connolly, Hood, Lennox, Hughes. Subs, Fallon, Wilson, Davidson, Callahan. Poor Coquilla were blown away in a first half blitz that began after just 45 seconds when Jimmy Johnston's cross was dummied by George Connolly, leaving Harry Hood free to slam it home. Johnston turned on a show for the fans and Celtic were 6 0 up by half time, Hood hitting a hat trick with John Hughes, Billy McNeil, and Johnston adding the others. True to his word, Steen brought on Paul Wilson at half time along with Vic Davidson in place of Davy Hay and Harry Hood. The second half belonged to the two youngsters, Wilson scoring two and Davidson one to complete a 9-0 route. The Daily Record wrote of Wilson on the 17th of September 1970. Wilson scored two grand goals and his cute footwork gave warning that Celtic have another touchline terror in the Johnston tradition. Malcolm Munro in the Evening Times of the 17th of September was even more impressed. Wilson, an outside left who started his career as a goalkeeper, is one of the greatest prospects I've ever seen. It's easy to go overboard about a boy who comes on as a substitute when the opposition is completely demoralised and scores two great goals, but that's not what counted for me. It was the way Wilson controlled the ball, the way he played it from one foot to the other, the way he could flash past a man, the way he didn't require two looks at the ball. This Paul Wilson, I tell you, is going to be one of the all-time greats, and I say that after watching him for just a few minutes. The record demolition of Coquilla belied the turmoil of a club still recovering from Milan and its fallout. There was still a core of wonderful players at Celtic, and this was still a team with realistic ambitions of winning another European Cup. It may be an apocryphal tale, but the Celtic wiki entry for this game states that a police announcement for a missing seven-year-old boy at this game was made over the tannoy, asking for the father of little Morris Johnston to come and pick him up. <laughs>